Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire. And when I'm not interviewing inspiring entrepreneurs, I'm listening to Stephanie O'Brien on the Moved by Purpose podcast. I am slowing down. I am saying no to distractions. I am keeping super focused on what I'm working on, working on one task at a time. And I am giving myself permission to let go of some great ideas that I want to work on, but I just can't work on them right now. Are you longing to know what your purpose is? Are you on the wrong career path? Do you feel like there must be more to life? Don't worry. There's hope. It's time to be moved by purpose. Now your host, Stephanie O'Brien. Hey, happy new year, everyone. This is Stephanie O'Brien with the Moved by Purpose podcast, episode 44. And thank you so much for your patience over the last two weeks. I apologize sincerely for not having an episode for you the past couple weeks. And I do not like making a habit of that. But for those of you who have been following along, With me, you know that I was in a move, a very big move, and life transition. My grandmother had passed away and also going on vacation, and so things just got way too hectic. And I did not plan and prepare ahead of time as I should have to have something backed up for this. And I normally do, but I ran out of the things that I had backed up and so just ran out of time. So I apologize for that. But thank you for coming back and checking back in with me. This episode is going to talk about the mistakes I've made in 2014 and the lessons I've learned from these mistakes and then the new goals that I have for 2015 and how I feel confident that my business will grow even more so by changing some of these new habits and setting these goals for myself. This episode is going to be very vulnerable because I am outing myself with my flaws and errors that I make and letting you know that I don't have it as together as it may appear at times from the outside in. So I am pulling the curtain back and letting you see all the yuck and all of the ugly. And I hope that there is grace and understanding and that you can relate. I'm sharing this and getting this vulnerable with you. Not to have you look at me and think, oh, she's an imposter or she's a fraud. But for you to realize like, oh, okay, I struggle with the same thing. I'm glad she's sharing this. So that's the hope for being this real. And... Yeah, and it's to serve you and to help you. So here are the things that I learned from my first year in working business, in my business full time without my day job. One, and this is to encourage those that may still be in day jobs. I want you to really value, even if you can't stand your day job, I want you to value all of the good things that it's doing for you. And it's doing a lot of good things. And you don't realize how many good things it does until you let it go and you're completely out on your own and you just have to fend for yourself. One of the things that I had in my day job that I took totally for granted was the fact that there was a team of people that were always there and someone there to train me and someone there to supervise me. And a lot of people I like, Oh, well, I can't stand the people that are always there and I can't stand the person that trains me and I can't stand the person that's supervising me. But it's a structure and an accountability and a support that is there that when it's gone, you realize how valuable it is for you, even if there's some less than ideal things going on in that situation. So the number one thing that I struggled with the first year of working in my business full time in 2014 was a lack of organization and structure. I had the shiny object syndrome big time where what I thought was productive was actually just foolish busy work. Not even I didn't realize it was foolish until I realized that it's like I'm doing so many things with my time and in my day and I am exhausted but I'm not seeing any results from my efforts 
which leads to despair and discouragement and resentment and a bad negative attitude and thinking pattern because that's another thing I did, which I'll talk about later, was negative thinking. But even my programs and things, I just had a hard time getting structure and organization. And I really believe that people pick up on that and it frustrates them. And it's not serving them in the best capacity. And it's not even serving you and your business at all when you're that disorganized and that and lacking that much in structure. So that was lesson number one. Lesson two, procrastination. I realized that I would drag my feet so much to when I did decide I need to get organized and have structure, I would procrastinate it. And again, procrastination and disorganization to me go hand in hand. They are a partner. And procrastination led to more disorganization, more chaos, more busyness, more running around, putting out fires. And again, I think that comes off. I think people sense that, that work with you, your clients, they pick up on it. And it doesn't do good with letting them feel like you're taking care of them and they're in good hands. I think they sense that it's like, does this person even have it together? Are they even capable of doing what I'm paying them to do and helping me? So that we're changing procrastination this year. Another thing is stubbornness. Stubbornness is a big one for me. And a lot of people think stubbornness can be an asset. But I'm going to talk about how it's not and clarify how stubbornness is really a good trait. And then excuses. Excuses, as much as I can't stand them, were things I was making myself without even realizing I was making them. And a lot of those excuses came from Again, you can see how they intertwine my lack of organization and structure, my procrastination, and my stubbornness. I would make excuses for why something wasn't turning out or working out for me rather than taking responsibility for the fact that I didn't take the time to slow down and get organized because I procrastinated to the last minute because I was so stubborn in refusing to do something I didn't want to do, which was slowing down and getting organized, then I made all kinds of excuses as to why none of this was happening. So that is all changing. That hurt so bad. That hurt me so much. Hurt me in more ways than I care to even reflect on, but I had to in order to get to this point. The pain was so great that change is happening. So here are some further examples of how all of this hurt me. I was moving at a very fast pace and I would liken it to sprinting on a treadmill. So you're going full speed, giving it full effort, full energy, full force, but getting nowhere. And that's how I was because of the shiny object syndrome. So I would have a great idea and go for it and have another great idea and go for it. And instead of saying no to those great ideas or writing them down just to get it out of my head and stop distracting me, I would literally be in the middle of writing an email and have a great idea and open up a website tab to start researching that and playing around with that idea and then going back to my email to write somebody else that I encountered through my exploration that I need to connect with. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I'm in the middle of this. I need to finish this. What was I doing? And then remind myself of that. And it was a mess, a mess. Like, I mean, you can laugh at it. You're probably laughing when you listen to it because you either do that yourself or you're like, how in the world does this girl even function? I don't even know. I really don't know. By a miracle. I really want to say by a miracle I was able to function. (laughs) So that is stopping. I am slowing down. I am saying no to distractions. I am keeping super focused on what I'm working on, working on one task at a time, and I am giving myself permission to let go of some great ideas that I want to work on, but I just can't work on them right now, and I just let it go, and I move on. Staying consistent. Consistency is so key, and I was not consistent in my workflow. I was not as consistent as I would have liked. This, again, led to burnout and discouragement. Because I would have this wonderful goal of, 
okay, on Mondays I'm doing this, Tuesdays I'm writing my book, Wednesdays I'm recording my podcast, but I never followed through with it. And I did not stay consistent because, again, I was too busy getting distracted and chasing all of these great ideas, which led to a lack of consistency, a lack of follow through, a lack of organization, procrastination, all of it, right? So this year I am being consistent and disciplined and saying no to the distractions. And then I made a comment earlier about stubbornness and how it rarely is a good thing. Determination is a good thing. Determination is a positive thing. Determination is refusing to give up with wisdom. Determination is having a goal, but realizing you might have to course correct. Determination is having a goal and staying true to that goal and making progress towards that goal, but realizing that you might have to take a break or rest and take care of yourself. You might have to add things that you weren't expecting. You might have to do things a little bit differently. You're listening to counsel to help you get there. That is refusing to give up on a goal using wisdom. That's determination. Stubbornness is flat out, in my opinion, and some people might not like this, but stubbornness, I believe, is foolishness. And I'm saying that because I am calling myself out. It's willful, willful meaning this is my way and I will have it no other way, which great, advocate for yourself. Speak up, tell people what you want and what you like. Go for that. That's a good quality within reason. But if you are refusing to give up your will or refusing to cooperate with others or refusing to bend your will to get into a happy medium, that is stubbornness and that is foolishness and that is going to hurt you. Stubbornness is also unteachable and harmful to you and to your relationships and to your goals. It is, I have an idea in my head. It's going to happen exactly this way. It's only going to happen this way and in this time, regardless of what other people tell me, what the feedback I'm getting from the circumstances, regardless of the warning signs. It's going to happen this way and this way only. That is stubbornness. That's being unteachable and that will hurt you. That will flat out hurt you. Let's say if your goal is to run a half marathon, but you do no training or prep, and you may physically, if you're young, you may actually be able to run 13 miles, but it is going to hurt you and it's going to be very dangerous. You could seriously injure yourself. And I have, unfortunately, there are marathoners that do not properly train, that force themselves to run the 13 miles, the half marathon, and they have heart attacks and die because stubbornness. They were not listening to their body. They were not listening to all of the ways the experts tell you how to do it safely and properly. They didn't want to take the time to do it. They just showed up and started running. That's stubbornness. Anyway, and that was some of the things I did. I would operate in that way sometimes as much as it pains me to confess that, but I'm bringing it out of the darkness and into the light so it no longer has power over me. And I have changed and turned from those ways and have committed to not doing that. I'm not doing that anymore. And once again, lack of follow through and follow up hurt me big time this year. And that was very much because of the projects that I had on my plate. And then all of the pretty ideas that I chased after, I would add more and more and more to my plate where I did not even know what was the original layer on my plate. I couldn't even see it or remember what it was. So that really held me back. So the things that I'm doing differently this year, So that was just my reflection and the stuff that I struggled with, but we're going to turn it positively and I'm very excited for that. The thing I'm doing differently is thinking more positively. 
because of these really nasty habits that I got into, I also had the nasty habit of negative thinking excuses, blaming everybody or everything as to why my goals aren't getting met instead of slowing down and really looking at, okay, what is it that I am doing that's causing this pain, that's causing me to not meet my goals, that is in my power. So one of the goals I'm doing is stretching myself more, doing things that intimidate me and that scare me and getting out of my comfort zone even more so. One of the things that I personally struggle with is actually picking up the phone to call people. I am more of, I process through writing, I can keep track of things I do in writing a lot easier, and so I would rather contact people through email. Well, doing things in writing is a much slower process than picking up the phone or even going somewhere in person to get somebody's attention. And so I have put it on my goals this year that I'm going to be bolder this year. I'm going to pick up the phone more. I'm going to go physically in person to get someone's attention. As much as that intimidates me and as uncomfortable as that is for me, it's going to be so good for me. So good for me. So I'm really looking forward to that. And already I've seen just by picking up the phone, huge benefits huge. I mean, I'm developing a better skill set in phone calls. I'm getting more clear in my communications verbally. And there's so many benefits coming from it. Whether I get actual closed deals or not, there's so many things that are good for just picking up the phone and calling someone. Another thing I'm doing differently is prioritizing a system and a workflow. I need to get consistent with the workflow. And so I am doing really good with doing the things that I don't want to do first and getting those out of the way and then staying consistent every day with having set days to do things. So Mondays is my organization day. That's when I organize my week based off of my projects and plan my time according around those projects. But there are things that I do every week that remain consistent, like my podcast or my blog or sending my newsletter. And so those have set days during the week that I will work on those and I will stay consistent with that. And so far, this is the first week that I've done it and it hasn't been perfect, but I am making progress and that is the point. And I feel really good about it. Slowing down. Oh my goodness, slowing down. Getting over the fact that I hate the details and attending to them anyway. As Ken Julian taught me in his Speak It Forward boot camp conference, is fast is slow and slow is fast. Again, that's saying no to the distractions, no to the shiny objects. And no to even my will and my way, which is, I don't feel like doing that. Like, Take better notes. Document more. That's another thing. Keep track of what you're working on. So I'm having my goals in writing that I need to review every day. And it's like, okay, today's goal is this. And today's activity is going to be focused on meeting this goal for today. And that means that all these other goals that I want to work on, we're not working on that today. Because that's not what we set out to do today. And it sounds so simple, but it was really hard for me to actually follow through with that. And so I'm doing that, and it's feeling really great. Using outlines and mind maps. So keeping track. When I started writing, I was just kind of like brain dumping. So it would just be this, just, I mean, it, great. It's progress. It's a star. You're writing things and keeping track of what you're doing. But the way I was keeping track was so disorganized that it took more time to figure out what I wrote and read it that it was pointless to even really bother keeping track of it, other than that it just was getting me in the habit of keeping track. Now I'm using outlines, and now I'm getting obsessed with outlines. I'm using outlines with everything because it's so much more easier to follow and understand. So I'm really enjoying that more, and I'm seeing a huge difference with that. Another thing that I'm doing is waking up earlier, and this has been hard. 
I have woken up, I don't know, maybe three out of the five days so far at the time I had wanted to when I would hit the snooze too long and get up 30 minutes later than I wanted. So I need to improve on that. I'm not even going to lie. I need to be more consistent with that. But again, progress. Whenever I would set out to wake up earlier in the past, I would make it one day and then just say, this is too hard. I'm not doing it. So the fact that three out of the five is huge progress compared to the past. Again, saying no to loud distractions, doing things that scare me and intimidate me. And I've already talked about that, thinking of others more, putting other people before myself and having the positive thoughts. Instead of looking at things of, okay, I wanted 25 people in my workshop and only 15 showed up. It's reversing it and saying, 15 people showed up in my workshop today. That's so awesome. And stop focusing on the fact that the goal wasn't met and just celebrate that the 15 people showed up. So things like that, thinking of others more and thinking in a more positive direction and positive light are really making a big difference for me this year. So I'm curious to hear what your goals are. What did you learn in 2014? And what are you working on to change this year? How can I help you? I would love to hear about it in the comments over at movedbypurpose.net. Put an episode 44 in the search bar if it's not right on top and make sure you share what those are. Let me know how I can help you. Send me an email. Let me know who you are. And as always, please remember to subscribe, rate, and write a review of this podcast. This helps me get found by more people. Don't be a stranger. Let me know who you are. Let me know how I've helped you. Let me know how I can help you. And if you're feeling stuck and you don't know what to do, I always encourage you to just do something. Just do something. You're overwhelmed. You have a general idea of what you want to do. Reach out to somebody that is doing what you want to do and ask them. That's doing something. That's learning what your first steps are reading a book, taking a course, hiring a coach, that is all doing something that will help you get to your goal. So I look forward to talking to all of you on my next episode. Fast is slow and slow is fast. Again, that's saying no to the distractions, no to the shiny objects, and no to even my will and my way, which is, I don't feel like doing that. 